Robert, are there any other positive secondary impacts we might be able to see with the infrared helmet? Listen, I've heard people ask, will it stimulate my hair growth? Will it help with <laughs> scar tissue or any wounds on the scalp? Will it do anything else positive? Or anything else we could throw out there for the positive side of things? Yeah, of course. It's exactly what you just said. Um, as um, infrared light would all will also stimulate, of course, the skin area. So there would be a benefit. You know, there are many um, devices on the market, mainly with red light, because you don't need to penetrate that deeply. But um, for hair growth, there are a lot of red light therapy devices. But of course, infrared from a cellular point of view works in the same way. So you would also stimulate hair growth by using the infrared helmet. And then, of course, it would also help to regenerate scar tissue, wound um, healing would be accelerated. Yeah, that's exactly like secondary effects, what you already said. Yeah. Now, a lot of the hair uh, regrowth, regeneration devices out there for the scalp use, as you said, red laser red. light, 650 or so, but they also use lasers. And I'm just curious, what was what made you go with the infrared uh, LEDs? versus a laser light itself because there's slight differences of course in the synchronicity of light and everything why'd you go with led well that's mainly because it's a home use device um, right. of course lasers as you said is um, current light so the penetration is even a bit better with laser light but when you want to use um, first of all so many diets in one device basically to cover the whole brain um, it would be too expensive, like putting 300 laser diets. That's, and also from a power, um, from the power source, and you need a lot of power to to run 300 laser diets. So from a from a technical point of view, it ha um, we have to use good focused LEDs, which are also able to have a good penetration in the end. Um, yeah, and then of course also heating effects. All those things are um, have to be considered. So it would be difficult to use um, lasers for this. Yeah, you might start to uh, impact the brain with that many diodes of laser, which need higher output. As we know, LEDs are incredibly efficient. And this, yeah. I have to say, you know, the first time I held this uh, helmet, it's incredibly light. It's it's like a bike helmet, basically, but with Mary. all these diodes. So incredibly light on the scalp. It's not like this heavy thing that your neck is supporting or mm. anything. Very easy to wear. So I think that's part of it. Jennifer, you were going to say something? I think I think we may have lost Jennifer there for a second, but let me it's continue just, on uh, here. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say there's there's 320 diodes in that helmet and wavelength of 8, 10 nanometer, right? So the power is 50 milliwatts per diode. So that's about 16 watts of power. So it's 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 a good push. It really is. And something I just wanted to add in there, Casper, if I may, before you continue sure. and you asked about other benefits. Because of the shape of the helmet, even though it's utilized as a helmet, we've even had athletes utilize it over knees and around the hip joints because of the shape of it. It fits perfectly over the area. So I know that sounds a little funny, but because of the penetration depth and the amount of power behind those infrared lights, it reduces inflammation quite rapidly. So we've had people utilize it that way as well, not just on the head. They've called us and said, hey, you know, I'm doing it on my knee this way because it's reducing the inflammation and I injured my knee. So there's definitely ways you can utilize it outside of the box thinking. No, that's really good to know. The uh, off-label usage, as pharmaceuticals would say, are, are always a good thing to understand and use. And, and you start to see photobiomodulation, this idea of specific light on the body is good for the body in general. And again, research backs this, everything. Why exactly. would you not want to use it first rather than you know, antidepressants, antipsychiatric, all these types of different medications that obviously have some sort of negative impact and multiple side effects and that people will need for the rest of their lives, most likely, and send them possibly into other types of conditions and other types of symptoms.